Hello everyone, my name is Finn and in today's video we'll take a look at the mythology of one of the greatest and most powerful civilizations the world has ever seen. That's right, today's topic is the ancient Egyptian mythology. Now, when we think about ancient Egypt, images of the Great Pyramids, the Pharaoh, the Nile or hieroglyphs come to mind. We don't usually think about the Egyptian gods. Actually, it seems that we are not so familiar with the Egyptian mythology, or at least not as familiar as we are with the Greek or Norse mythology. Maybe you've heard about some names like Osiris, Isis or Anubis, but you don't really know who they are or what they do. Before we start, I feel it's necessary to visualize the time span the Egyptian civilization covers. Of old, 3050 BC has been pinned as the start of the Egyptian civilization, when the mythical king Menes for the first time unified Upper and Lower Egypt. Then the society would continue to exist for over 3,000 years, with ups and downs of course, like the three intermediate periods. Until finally, in 30 BC, under the reign of Cleopatra, Egypt surrendered to the armies of Augustus and became engulfed in the Roman Empire. Throughout all its history, the Nile River remained the lifeline of ancient Egypt. Literally, the whole society was built around its banks. The reason the Nile was so important is that every summer the river would flood, leaving behind very fertile soil which makes the ground next to the Nile excellent for agriculture. Obviously, the cycles of nature really defined the Egyptian life. So in that sense, the people must have had a different understanding of time than we have today. The Egyptians saw the present as an everlasting series of recurring patterns. That seems kind of strange for us, but think about it. In a way, time really seemed to stand still for the average Egyptian. I mean, if you're born in a family of farmers, chances are that your life is little different than the life of your grandparents, or even their grandparents. You will still use the same tools and the, the environment would change very little. Very unlike us now, where the life of our grandparents, even our own parents, is almost unrecognizably different from our own life. We conceive time as linear, while the Egyptians saw it more circular. So what is the Egyptian mythology like? Well, first of all, the Egyptian mythology is one of the most complex mythologies the Earth has ever seen, due to lack of complete authentic documentation. Many of the sources are fragmentary or much later attestations made by, for example, Greek schoolers, who often deteriorated the original meaning. The mythical stories also differ widely depending on the place and time where and when they were written down. And lastly, there is also a problem with the Egyptian writing system, the hieroglyphs. They work fine if you want to form simple sentences where you refer to physical entities like the sun, goats or humans, but hieroglyphs are very insufficient if you want to transfer abstract philosophical or mythical concepts. So all of this resulted in a very complex cluster of fragmentary documentation where some versions of the story seem to contradict depending on the source. So for convenience sake, I will always use the most complete source in this video. The Egyptian word maat refers to the fundamental order of the universe. It stands for the concepts of truth, balance, order, harmony, morality and justice. Basically everything that distinguishes the earth from the primordial chaos. Maat was also the goddess who personified these concepts. She regulated the seasons, the stars, and maintained the order among humans. Her ideological opposite was Ishvet, who personified injustice, chaos, violence, and evil. To the Egyptians, the most important human maintainer of Maat is a pharaoh, or the Neferneter, how he is also sometimes called. In myths, the pharaoh is the only human deity. He is designated to represent the gods on earth. Egyptians saw the earth as a flat piece of land, personified by the god Geb. Over the earth arches the sky, usually represented by the god Newt. The two are separated by the personification of air, Shu. Beyond the world lies an infinite expanse of formless water, known as the god Nun. The sun god Ra is said to travel through the sky across the body of Newt, enlivening the world with his light. At night, Ra passes beyond the western horizon into the Duat, a mysterious region that borders the formlessness of Nun. At dawn, Ra emerges from the Duat in the eastern horizon, and the whole circle can start over again. This is a very basic idea. There is another version where the sun travels under the earth at night, but according to one source I consulted, these are dissimilar but coexisting ideas, just like the Bible also has two creation stories. The fertile lands of the Nile Valley, which is Upper Egypt, and the Nile Delta, which is Lower Egypt, lie at the center of the world. Outside them are infertile desert lands where savages live. 
Somewhere beyond these desert lands lies the horizon, or the Akhet. There are two mountains in the east and west mark the places where the sun enters and exits the Duat. Egypt had one of the largest and most complex pantheons of any civilization in the ancient world. Over the course of the Egyptian history, hundreds of gods and goddesses were worshipped. The characteristics of individual gods could be hard to pin down. Most had principal associations with, for example, the sun or the underworld. But these could change over time as gods rose and fell in importance and evolved in ways that corresponded to developments in Egyptian society. Here are some of the most prominent and most famous deities in the Egyptian pantheon. Osiris, one of Egypt's most important deities, was god of the underworld. He also symbolized death, resurrection, and a cycle of Nile floods that Egypt relied on for agricultural fertility. According to the myth, Osiris was king of Egypt, who was murdered and dismembered by his brother Seth. His wife, Isis, reassembled his body and resurrected him, allowing them to conceive a son, the god Horus. According to the Osiris myth, Horus was the son of Isis and Osiris. Horus was raised to avenge his father's murder. One tradition holds that Horus lost his left eye fighting with Seth, but his eye was magically healed by the god Thoth, because the right and left eyes of Horus were associated with the sun and the moon. The loss and restoration of Horus' left eye gave a mythical explanation for the faces of the moon. By the way, do you know why many of the Egyptian gods are represented as half-human, half-animal? Well, that's because in ancient Egypt, people believed some animals were sacred. They saw them as a embodiment of a particular god. That's why the sky god Horus is often depicted with a falcon's or a hawk's head. Because hawks were seen as rulers of the sky, just like heroes. Seth was a god of chaos, violence, deserts and storms. Seth's appearance poses a problem for schoolers. He's often depicted as half-animal, but they can't quite figure out what animal he's supposed to be. He usually has a long snout and long ears that are squared at the tips. Many schoolers now believe that no such animal ever existed and that the Seth animal is just a mythical composition. Wolves or jackals were often seen roaming around the tombs of the dead, so they became associated with death. That's why Anubis, the guardian of the dead, had what scientists now believe is a wolf's head. Anubis helped mummify Egyptians when they died and guided their souls in the afterlife. When a person died, Anubis weighed their hearts against the feather of truth. If the heart weighed the same as a feather, the soul moved towards paradise. But if it was heavier, the monster goddess Amut ate the heart and the soul would disappear forever. Thoth, the god of writing and wisdom, could be depicted in form of a baboon or a sacred ibis. He was believed to have invented language and the hieroglyphic script. As the god of wisdom, he functioned as an advisor for the gods and he also possessed knowledge of magic and secrets unavailable to other gods. Lastly, we'll take a look at Ra or Re. He is the Egyptian deity of the sun. He was one of the most important gods in ancient Egyptian religion. He ruled in all parts of the world, the sky, the earth and the underworld. That's why he's sometimes seen as the king of the gods. Ra was portrayed as a falcon and shared characteristics with the sky god Horus and Amun. At times, the two deities were even merged as Amun-Ra. All forms of life were believed to have been created by Ra. In some accounts, humans were created from Ra's tears and sweat. Hence, the Egyptians called themselves the cattle of Ra. So that's all I gotta say about that. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in another video.